Hi guys, welcome back. Oh, right. Um, this isn't straight after the little pop video because, um, well, I got that done. I needed a wee, and when I went outside, I thought, oh, that's got dark. Looked at me watch and see how late it was. And thought, right, I ain't had dinner yet. So <laughs> this is at literally two days after. But I was going to carry on with the um, little bit on the spindle gouge that I was doing. Uh, and I've done that little bit with the back hollow. I should never have done back hollowing on a, on a side grain bowl type orientation. It's for end grain, only end grain. That's all you do. Um, so I'll do it. I'll do a little bit. It won't be a lot because I'm making today. I'm making. I've made one of these. It's a duck egg cup, okay? Because we like boiled duck eggs, and if you know, they don't fit in a normal egg cup. Goose egg you can put into a teacup, pack it with a little bit of kitchen towel or something. It's all right. Duck eggs don't. So um, I made a little duck egg cup, and I'm going to make another one. Okay, this one was done out of a piece of lime. I haven't got another piece, so I'm going to use a piece of beach. It's like a, a lightly spalted beach. I'm going to use that. Okay, so I'm going to make one of those. Now, I didn't. I haven't got any duck eggs at the moment, um, so I couldn't measure a duck egg to get the proper size. So I've done the next best thing and went and measured a duck's bum <laughs> at the local park to see what's... <laughs> That's not an easy thing to do, I'm telling you. And the looks you get of the people feeding the ducks is quite... Yeah, I don't recommend it. Wait until you can get a duck egg and measure that. Right, anyway, enough of that. I'm going to work to those measurements. So I'm going to put that there. What, the duck's bum? <laughs> yeah. Right, so I'm going to get this piece mounted. Just between centres. I'm going to turn it to round, put a tenon on the end and get it in my chuck. Okay. Right, yes, Christmas morning for breakfast. We will be having a nice soft boiled duck egg each. So I want another egg cup. Right, so as usual, as I say, when I rough down, I always rough down with a roughing gouge. That's what it's for, that's what it does best. So get this turning. And we get this rough down. Oh, I think we're pretty much round. Get cleaned up. Now, I'm going to take some measurement. I want it to be just inside the diameter, uh, just outside of the diameter of this one, so I can bring it down a little bit. Right, so go for that. So, got a little bit to go. Get the tool rest in. Got the tool rest quite high, I'm above centre. Okay, I'll ride my bevel there, look, that's the bevel rub in, there it is, riding it. Pull over, this way. And that's what you want. You want nice savings like that, look. Not crushed. You don't want crushed ones. You want them nice and smooth like that. That means you're getting a nice, beautiful cut, okay? And you store it, store it stay sharp a lot longer. So just roll it over on the bevel, come around for a nice clear cut. Look at that. Right, one more and we should be there. Now that sounds to me like I've got something there. I can hear something there. Right, there we go, rectified. So, I'm going to put a tenon on the end. Right, I've got a tool for that. So I'll just come in. Right, that's about what I want for my drawers. That's about as much as, as measuring I'll get to. Right, what have we got here? We've got something. Oh dear. Now, now, I don't know whether that's going to come out or not. Oh, that's not nice. I don't know how deep that's going to go. Yeah, I didn't see that there. It's hard to see from the outside of the... Yeah, I don't know how deep that's going to go in. Right, I've got a. I don't want to 
waste my time turning it if it's going to be middle so if i come down a bit if i put a couple of lines on this and i'll see what happens if i go down on that middle there I might have to find it there, change this to another piece of wood, guys. I'm sorry about that. Let me just see what happens if I go in a bit with this. Ah. Ah. Now it's catching it. It's filled up in here, it. And it's catching at the sides there. It's grabbing so no look at that it's all coming apart right that's got to come off i'm afraid that bit of wood's no good right i've got to find another piece of wood to use all right oh give me two minutes okay let me go and cut this let me just go and cut this down Lisa, talk to you for a minute. Oh, will I? <laughs> Sing a song. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you right, a Merry Christmas. Maybe silence might be better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being festive. Sorry? I'm being festive. Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, maybe silent night. <laughs> Me to sing to them. I was singing to them. Yes, I said sing, don't torture. Mm. You could have tried Silent Night, couldn't you? <laughs> no, I meant just be silent, darling, that's all. <laughs> just be silent. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, here we go again. Right now, I've I've just rounded this piece down. <laughs> Let's put it on. Oh, that one about Jefferson. Oh, was it? Right, okay. Let's go again. Right, so again, you want these lovely, look at this. This is kiln dried wood. This is, I think this is rippled sycamore. Okay, and these are, the, look, you don't want any crushing on your kelp. Then that means you're getting a nice, up. Right, it's got to come down a bit. So I'm going to want my tool rest up a little bit higher. There we go. I like to be right above centre. That's what gives you the nice cut. Right, where are we? Oh, we've got a long way to go. The place to wood really, isn't it? Right, we're near enough there. Right, final pass, just to clean up. Well, that's what you want. You want shavings like that. That means you're cutting, not scraping. Right, okay, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a tenon on the end of this. I've got a tool for that, for my drawers. Right, about there. Just me. That's a better piece of wood, look at that. Right, I'll get the chuck put on. Tighten, just that's it, it's tight enough. 
It's held properly in those jaws, so that's tight enough. Don't go crushing all the fibers down. Right, I'm taking that towel stock out because I don't want that in there. The live center, I mean. I don't want that. Don't bang me elbow on it. And I'm going to push that right down out of the way. All right, okay. So first off, I'm going to do pretty much all of this with a spindle gouge. So, right, and this one, this one has, you can see, quite a long sweat back grind on this one, on my gouges. I have, oh, let me take that off just for a second. Waffle alert. <laughs> Waffle time. Right. Uh, now then, if I get uh, another box. Right, okay. Now that, that's a sort of grind I would have on most of my spindle gouges, is this one, which is quite steep. Um, quite quite a straight grind, well, shallow grind, steep grind, depending on what you want to call it. Um, I think on that I've got, it's about 30 degrees or something on that one. That's quite, so I wouldn't not always have them as steep as that. I normally go to about 40, something like that. Um, but the trouble with these is you've got this heel which you can't you can't get in and go go round your corners or anything on that one. But this one is good if you want to do some hollow, if you want to come in shallow bowls and things, you can hollow that nice because you can stay on the bevel. As you come down, you can st keep on the bevel to come across the bottom. Now, um, a lot of us here, most of these, I've got, I was looking for one that's only got a single grind, but I haven't got them because I normally put, well, that's, that's my normal grind for my normal spindle gouge, okay? That would normally be straight down I put a second bevel on there, okay, and that way that allows me to go round, do more shaping, okay, that's for the standard type, but for what I'm doing today, or what I'm going to be doing on here, so I'm going to do a little little bit of back hollowing on this, not a lot, I don't like back hollowing, it's not for me, I don't recommend it, it's an horrible thing, but I will just demonstrate a little bit, because you can only do it on end grain, and I shouldn't have done it on the side grain. Um, and just show the difference between back hollowing and, and pull cutting. Right, now this this is quite a, this has quite a steep grind, but again I'll put a second bevel on it. Okay. And if you're new for turning, all I do I use for, for sharpening my gouges, I use two I've I've got another one as well, but I use a, a the Tormek one for most of my gouges. And I normally do a two inch protrusion out there that's it is it that goes on so i do my grind and then all i do is i slide that back off turn that round put it back on and come down and that gives me that second bevel there and that allows me to to come in and roll and do cut because of this when you've got this sort of grind you do more slicing cuts you don't tend to come in and work on the tip too aggressive it, 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 it bites you every time it, it, you get skip backs and everything on it so, which you'll see today, the, the difference in how I use it. Right, okay, so let me just uh, clean this bottom off. So I'm just gonna clean the bottom off here. There we go, nice and clean. Alright, then we're going to come around. And we want to be pretty much... Oh, come on, I'm going to pull the rest up, hang on. That's it, right. Pull the rest nice and close. We want to be on centre, so I'm a little bit high. Okay. Mm, this fraction high. Okay, there we are. Right, so, I come in, I've got my bevel rub in, turn, just come in. Come in like that, Take that little jiggle away, and then we're going to come in, and we're just going to start to come up. And we come in, and we come up. And we come in, and come up. Now, you tend to be a lot more aggressive with this. But I'm just for demonstration purposes. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, and what you're doing is you keep this hole small and you, you hollow out on the inside of it. So you're coming in and you're, you're actually taking the wood off of this side, not this side. That's why you're back hollowing. Okay, so it's coming in, get in there, and uh, it, gets, it can get a bit jumpy. You can get nice shavings coming out and it gets going, look. Okay, and then you just come around and just open it up a bit. Right, now, so that's your back following. For me, I don't like it. It's, it's, all it is for is to get all the centre out as quick as possible and then you come in and clean it up with a scraper or something else. For me, I would rather a pull cut. So if you've got a pull cut, you can't pull cut over here. Look. See what happens? Screeching. You'll get this come off, but if you look at these shavings, they're like, look, they're like Constantinas. Okay, they're like Constantinas, they're, they're crushed. That's because that, all that's doing is scraping. If you want a pull cut, you've got to get your handle over there. You've got to come in around this way. Get on that. And then when you get your fibres, they won't be so crushed, they'll be straighter, they're breaking. Sorry, they're too thin, they're breaking. Right, hang on, let me clean that button off. Now I've got to be careful now actually because I'm got a bit right, so I've got to be careful because I don't want to go too deep here because I've got a I've got to match up with this, this the edge of the edge cut. So I'm going to just do some very critical measuring here. <laughs> yep, that's about the same depth. Right, so I'm pretty much there. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure this spot. And just check here. Right, I'm okay for my opening still. Good. I'm glad I didn't chase that duck around that pond for nothing. <laughs> right, so I've got my opening. Right, that's all I want to come to. So I'm just going to bring that back here at this tip. There we go. Now remember an egg, the shape of the bottom of an egg, so I'm not going to take too much off. Right, there you go, there's the shavings up. And there you want, you want your shavings like that, they're not crushed, okay? They're long, long shavings. If they're crushed up like Constantina's, that's because you're scraping it. You want to get in, get on that bevel. If your tool handle's over that side, you won't get all your screeching. Right now, the best thing for me to do here is to use a scraper to clean that up. Now, a lot of people would come in with this, a negative rate scraper, okay? And use that. But for me, I prefer to just use a 15 mil round negative scraper. A negative cutter, I mean, as a scraper because I can come in and I can just clean this up. We get a nice finish on that. Right, I've got a slight fiddle there. Because this, the, uh, a little bit just on that edge. You right there? I'm trying not to get the camera. There we go, we've got it. Yeah, and this is what I say with your with your carbide cutters to roll it over and cut. Negative rate ones are actually designed for that specific reason to give that negative rate straight. 
it's good roll them over, but it's not really what it's for. So I'm going to come in here, pick up my cut. Don't want no skipping back. Roll it. There we go. Right, now I'm going to soften that edge like that, and I'm going to soften this edge like that. That's it. Now we're going to sand that a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Right, okay. Let's we'll start off with this one here. Just for that bottom. I can get in there. Right, that's that one. Right, now I'm going up to 400 grit. So I'm on 400 grit now. such a clean finish in there but it's shame to spoil it with sandpaper there we go right okay mm, it's just in just uh turn the bus card out now I'm going to use a bit more sand and paste for this Just my own paste. I right, say so this uh, seals it, sands it, and waxes it. And does it all in one go. There we go. That's that bit done. You can see the bit of the. Uh, I'll get some more grip. I'll throw this one first. My wax in. Right, okay. Right, it's a nice finish in there. Right, okay, now then. I'm going to come up with that. I've got to work out some sizes here. You should do this, get pencil. Right, first off I want where that cove is. That's where I'm gonna start my first bead and I've got five beads down there and then my bottom is just there. Okay. You could use a parting tool come in here and just Let me know where my bottom is, okay? Right. Okay, spindle gouge first. So now, oh, hang on. I should have done really, just check the diameter of it first, won't I? Yeah, we're all right. I've got to thin that down a little bit. So, sorry, I'm going to take those marks off again. I'm just going to take those marks, marks back off because I'll. I want to come down a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to shear scrape this. Just going to shear cut this. You don't get scraping. From behind it, tool handle down. And you'll get these lovely fine, fine shavings. Right, let me just come and just have a look and see where I'm getting on that diameter. Tiny little bit more. Got a bit of a bump on my tool rest there. Right, let's see. Yeah, I'm there. That's good enough. Right, okay, let me put those marks back on. I was a bit too eager with putting the marks on. Right. That's it. That's good. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put these beads on. And for that, I'm just going to do it. There 
we go, we've got four bees. Pretty close enough. That'd be close enough, that'd do. Right, now, we'll shoot this down. Oh, don't that. Sorry, got to come round a little bit. Actually, I'll just too straight with the tool. And so I'm using a slicing action here. Oh, sorry, too straight. That's it there. So if you don't get in, if you've got that slight angle there. Okay, look, it just wants to kick back all the time. And to do with this tool, you must get that, that that's got to be straight there, like that. Then we're fine. And look, look what comes off to the cup. Nice little hairs come off. Right, coming down again. Oh, not that way, that's it, there it is. I'm going to check for my, just want to check, I know I've got a little way to go but I don't want to over, go down in the middle, let me just check here, right that's what I've got to come down to, so oh, I've got a little way to go yet, okay. We're getting closer to doing the finishing cuts now, so I've got to get them good. So as I'm doing this, I'm moving the tool up and rolling it. And now we're near enough there. One more cut and we're done. So, we come in. Get the cut up there. fine there right okay i think yep i've got it right there okay so now we've got that we're going to come up just a very fraction on there i've got to just take one more little bit well i can't come that way there that's it Do. Yeah, that's a bit better. Right now, I've got to do one, two, and then the end bit. Three beads on here. All right, yeah. Starting from here. So again, I come in, drop the razor tool handle, come back up, roll it over. Put the tool handle, come back, roll it over, and down. There we go, carefully rolled on there. Now I'm going to put in again the pine tool. Take okay, a little bit of that off. Just using the side of the parting tool as well, just to clean it as I'm going in. Stop there so I can do a bit of a uh, standing. Right, yep. And again. Just using a bit of 400 grit for this. Oh, two's on. Yeah, look, when you do those cuts, they're the shavings you get. Like that.
And all I'm doing here really is taking off the, the slight burnish marks from where the heel of the tool rubbed that little bit. Turn that little bit off that top there. I don't really want to touch these too much because I don't want to spoil their shape. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that should all be alright. Right. We'll get a bit of sand in place from that. in a little minute, a couple of seconds, you can see it starts to just shine up. The abrasive breaks down pretty quick in this. And it seals it and it waxes it. Right, there we go. Um, I'm going to cut that off now. Right, there we go. Let's give it a fold it with. So don't spoil it with my own. There we are. That's off. We've just got to do a little clean up on that bottom. But there you go guys, that's oh, that's quite a nice finish on that actually. And you can see all I did all I sanded with that was 400 grit. Okay, so first off now I want to just take this off of here and put a chuck on there. Should be alright. Shouldn't get any marks on it. And it doesn't matter if I do because I can turn it round again and I might just take a fraction off of that. That's a little bit thicker than what that one is, so I might take a little bit off of that front after I've finished the bottom off. Right, I've got a perfect circle. So that's got that nice and tight. There you go. Out, put them away. Right, I'm going to come in and just take this down. Right, I'm going to clean this edge here. 
that's nice and clean. Now obviously I want a foot on this because I, I want it to sit flat when it's on the table. So it's got to come rolled right the way. I've closed the flute, gently turn, pick up the cup. Oh, just catching a little bit there, just feel it. One in the grab, just take a little bit less. A little dibble, let's just take that off. Right, there we are, guys. A little bit of oh, that's just a slight bump in the middle. I'm just going to take that off. Oh, no, don't do that. Went past the centre then. That's it. I went, just went past centre, and it sort of gave me that little shadoop moment. Shadoop. Right. Okay. Quick little sound on the bottom. Turn in place. Quite nice that big to get a nice little little circle there, a little bit of detail. Look at that. Right, okay. Oh, actually, I've got a little swell on it. Look at that. I didn't even know I'd done that. <laughs> that's actually a slight... That's when that went over. That's a slight... I've got to leave that, because that's actually a... I like that. That's like a little... I'll have to learn to do that. <laughs> could I... Could I... Re, could I... Re, replicate. Replicate that. Right, and as you see, because it was a perfect circle, no marks around the top. But I want to take that a little bit thinner because that's a little bit thicker on the outside than that one. So I'm going to put that back in this way round. Which again, it's perfect circle. It's all running true. And I'm just going to make a couple of little shear cuts on that. I've done nothing silly, so my gouge is still nice and sharp. And I'm just going to so want it to match. Yeah, that's all right, that. Because that's got a slight, slight sound for that way. So I've done the same on that now. So that's good, that's enough. I'm happy with that. Just cut to the paper, to the 400. Standard the standard pace. Yeah, I would have gone back and taken that off at the bottom, but I actually quite like that. It's like a little signature. I'll have to do that. So just put this thing on, go past center and off. That give me a little signature. Right, there we go. Very nice. Slightly different colors, but on the Base of it, it shouldn't be too bad. Not too bad, guys. There you go. There you go, and that's me two egg cups. So now I've just got to get back over there park and catch that bloody duck. <laughs> Try and squeeze an egg out of it. <laughs> I've never egged a duck before. So there you go, guys. They're, they're, they're pretty close to matching up. Okay, different woods, so that one's lime, that one's spot with beach. 
So there we go. <laughs> and that one's got, that one's worth a fortune because that's got my signature on the bottom of that one. <laughs> That's got my little G, my spiral G. Yeah. That's got, not everyone can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Happens once in a lifetime, that. <laughs> right, there we go, guys. Thank you for joining me. Just a quick one. And I'll see you on the next one. Going to be my platter. My bowl with a bowl. There you go. Mm. We'll see how that one goes. Right, okay, toodle pip, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for joining me. Bye, guys.